Hi, it's Dr. Isom. I am here today to tell you about personality stability, development, and change. In this lecture, I will be talking about the stability of personality and the influences that produce that stability, things that affect the development of personality across the lifespan, and personality change. Can we change our personalities, and if so, how? So first I wanna ask you, think about what your personality is like today. Is it the same as it was in high school? Is it the same as it was when you were a child? Is it the same as it was even last year? Well, if your answer is that your personality has changed, and even if it's changed quite a bit, that's not that unusual because adults who are in the 18 to 25 year old range show a lot of variability in their personality. However, as we mature, the stability of our personality and our consistency in our behavior tends to increase. There is one thing though that remains consistent and that is something called rank order consistency. Rank order consistency is the fact that if you were to take any personality characteristic, for example, let's take impulsiveness and measure it in a group of people, and then rank order them from the most impulsive to the least impulsive in the group, and then let them go on their way for 10 years. At 10 years, measure them again and rank them in order from the most impulsive to the least impulsive. What you would find is that even though their mean level of impulsiveness might have changed, their rank order is the same. The person who is the most impulsive in that group of people is still the most impulsive. The person that was the fourth most impulsive would still be the fourth most impulsive. And then the person who is the least impulsive in the group would still be at the end of that line. This is called rank order consistency. And this is something that you definitely see in people's personalities as they age and develop. Our levels of different traits may change somewhat, but the way that you differ from other people remains the same as you grow and develop. There have been many studies that have shown that personality is fairly stable, even though it may seem at your age that your personality may have shifted quite a bit and may still be shifting. There have been several studies that have examined the stability of personality traits in a 10 year period. And in this case, what you're doing is you're measuring the traits at time one, and then 10 years later, you're measuring the same traits, and then you're just correlating the scores. We call those correlations stability coefficients. The stability coefficients for personality traits range from 0.60 to 0.90. So there is considerable evidence that personality does remain stable and although mean levels might change somewhat, personality really doesn't change that much over 10 years. We also know from numerous studies that have assessed childhood personality and temperament that quite a bit of adult behavior can be predicted from childhood measures of personality and temperament. Probably the most famous one is Walter Michel's marshmallow study. Remember he did the marshmallow study in which he told children that they could either eat the one marshmallow they had in front of them or wait and they would get two marshmallows if they waited until the experimenter came back in. So he was testing their ability to delay gratification. And then 20 years later, he found out that when he tracked those kids down, the ones who were able to resist eating the marshmallow so they could get a second marshmallow, the ones who showed delay of gratification, they were the ones that were more academically and career-wise successful. They were even healthier than the kids who couldn't resist that first marshmallow. So we know that childhood personality characteristics predict life outcomes as adults. Personality disorders have also been found to be generally stable too, although they are not as stable as personality traits. And really one of the defining characteristics for some personality disorders like borderline personality disorder is inconsistency in behavior. We'll learn a lot more about personality disorders later in the semester. So what is it that causes our personality to be stable from childhood to adulthood? Some of our personality characteristics are more heavily influenced by genetics, and those happen to be the personality characteristics that we refer to as temperament. 
Temperament traits are those traits that are thought to be the origin or the beginnings of adult personality. They appear early in development, they emerge during the first year of life, and they continue to be important throughout the lifespan because they influence aspects of our personality, such as our tendency to experience both positive and negative emotion, whether or not we are inhibited or uninhibited, and our activity level. There are many different researchers who have hypothesized different temperament traits, but in general, you can group them into three categories, positive emotionality, negative emotionality, and effortful control. Those have shown to be strongly genetically linked. Positive emotionality is probably the precursor to extroversion. Negative emotionality is probably the precursor to neuroticism. And effortful control, which is being able to delay gratification, being able to sustain attention on a task, even if it's not a fun task, that is probably the precursor to both conscientiousness and agreeableness. So there are some aspects of our personality that have strong links in our genome and therefore will continue to exert a relatively stable biological influence on our personality throughout our lifespan. Some of the other things that lead to increased stability of personality are physical factors like your sex or your gender or how attractive you are. Studies have shown that attractive people are treated in a different way, in a more positive way, and then that tends to reinforce their behavior in response to how people treat them. We also know that socioeconomic status can have an impact on personality because of differences in nutrition, differences in resources, and differences in the environment or the neighborhood in which people grow up. Another thing that can lead to personality stability is the culture of your family. All of these variables influence the kind of experiences you have and therefore impact your thoughts, your feelings, and your behaviors and the personality that you develop. And many of these things will remain the same for much of your life. One of the things that students often are interested in is whether birth order has an impact on personality. And this has been studied quite a bit. It's based on the idea that parents may treat children that are born first differently from children that are born later, and those differences might impact their personality. For example, firstborn children might be expected and rewarded for being responsible and for being conscientious, particularly when later born children come along, increasing the stability of traits such as responsibility and conscientiousness. Later borns, because they don't have that increased responsibility, are hypothesized to be more extroverted, independent, and even rebellious. Some research has indicated that, yes, firstborns tend to be more ambitious, they tend to be more conscientious, tend to believe in traditional values, whereas later born children have been shown to be more extroverted, score higher in openness, and more agreeable. And some have even hypothesized that they tend to be more rebellious. But the problem with these studies is that they're very inconsistent. And even well-controlled studies have failed to find consistent evidence that these personality traits are correlated with birth order. And besides that, it leaves out middle kids. What about middle kids? Seems like middle kids would be ripe for study because middle kids tend to have to compromise all the time. That would contribute to personality stability as well. But that research remains to be seen. Okay, so what are some other causes of the stability of your personality? What helps to maintain the stability of your personality traits? One of the things that has been studied fairly extensively is children's early positive and negative experiences. Positive experiences like having well-educated parents leads kids to be more extroverted and emotionally stable, but not necessarily conscientious, which is an interesting finding. But more importantly, negative experiences can also have a huge impact on children's personalities. We know from the neuroscience literature that early trauma, early childhood trauma and abuse can possibly even impact the brain and cause atrophy in certain structures, such as the hippocampus, that are involved in helping you to calm down and react to stress in a positive way. So early traumatic experiences could have a detrimental impact and could tend to make traits like neuroticism more stable. 
Experiences for kids such as bullying or rejection, rejection by peers, and also there have been studies that have investigated rejection by a parent. Those lead to difficulties in interpersonal relationships and also higher levels of depression and anxiety. There's also an interaction for children who have temperament traits that predispose them to negative affect, like greater negative affectivity. And when they have these negative life experiences, they can have an especially bad reaction to them. One of the things that Funder talks about is having chronic biological inflammation as a result of having some of these negative experiences as a child. On the flip side, parents who are educated tend to have children who are more extroverted and emotionally stable, but surprisingly not more conscientious. And this finding held for not only biological children, but also adopted children, which indicated it was really the environment that mattered, not the genetics. Person environment transactions are another thing that can contribute to personality stability. There are three kinds, the active, the reactive, and the evocative. The active person transaction describes a situation or an environment in which a person's personality fits that environment well. So an extrovert and a big party, that is an active person environment transaction. That's an environment that fits that person's personality trait of extroversion very well and tends to reinforce that trait. The next one is a reactive person environment transaction and reactive person environment transactions occur when there's a mismatch between the personality of a person and the environment that they're in. So just like the extrovert finds the loud wild party reinforcing and enjoyable, the introvert on the other hand doesn't. The introvert finds that kind of environment very aversive. So that is a reactive person environment transaction. A reactive person environment transaction is when different people respond differently to the same situation. And then the last one is the evocative person environment transaction. And that describes a situation where a person's personality trait causes an environment to be changed, to be more consistent with that person's personality trait. So they're actually evoking the environment that fits them. Something we've talked about before is that as an individual grows and develops and matures, their personality tends to become more consistent and more stable because they engage in the same types of routines and in similar environments, and their personality traits are then reinforced by those routines. This is something that can be called cumulative continuity. Cumulative continuity is the idea that a person's personality will become more and more stable as their life goes on and consistency increases as a person matures. So that also speaks to the maturity principle. As I mentioned before, personality stability coefficients are correlations between personality traits measured at one time with those same traits measured at a later time. These stability coefficients are lowest in childhood, although they still are significant at the correlation of 0.31, but they tend to increase in size as the person develops and grows and becomes more mature. Stability coefficients continue to increase in college years, and then they increase to 0.75 in studies that have examined 50 to 7 year olds. Again, these are personality stability coefficients where a personality trait at time one is correlated with the same measure of that trait at time two, and that gives you an idea of how stable that person's personality trait is. Because as people develop and mature, their lives require more routine, what happens is that the environment that the person is in becomes more and more stable with age, which then increases the amount of consistency in a person's behavior and personality. Psychological maturity is also something, as I mentioned, that increases consistency because as you get older, you take on adult roles that require more responsibility and you have less opportunity to behave in an inconsistent way because you know you have responsibilities and children to take care of or parents to take care of, car payments to make, mortgages, and so on. These data represent a cross-sectional study of people of different ages between ages 10 and 60 based on more than a million responses to an online survey. In fact, it is the BFI online five-factor inventory. These graphs represent mean levels of each of the five factors 
They were collecting personality data to see whether the mean levels of traits differed for people of different ages. What they found is really interesting. What you'll notice is that for conscientiousness, agreeableness, and openness, you see this general increase that starts right about when personality starts to level off at about 20, and a general increase as the person ages. Thankfully, neuroticism peaks in about the teen years for women and continues to decrease for the rest of women's lives. For men, it tends to decrease in the 20s and 30s, but it also tends to decrease overall. That's a relief. You'll also notice that for conscientiousness, neuroticism, agreeableness, and uh, openness, there is a dip around the teen years where a lot of hormonal changes are going on, and then it stabilizes right around the 20s and then continues to be relatively stable, although increasing throughout the lifespan. These demonstrate that personality can continue to develop. In this case, conscientiousness, agreeableness, and openness tended to increase as people develop, and neuroticism tended to decrease. But overall, stability and mean level change was able to happen at the same time. Now, one of the criticisms of this kind of a study, a cross-sectional study, is something called cohort effects. And that's where, because you're measuring 10-year-olds, 28-year-olds, 53-year-olds, all of these different age levels at the same time, what you might have as an extraneous variable is something called cohort effects. And that's that people who grew up in that generation may be different for some reason from people in other generations. And that's something that you would pick up because you're just collecting people of these different age groups all at one time. A way to get around that is to do a longitudinal study where you measure personality when people are very young and continue to track them every few years until they are much older. You can avoid cohort effects because you're tracking the same generation across time. And what's interesting is that for studies that have done this, the findings for the big five are almost identical to the cross-sectional studies, which suggest that cohort effects probably aren't having that big of an impact. Conscientiousness, agreeableness, and openness still are shown to increase over the lifespan, and neuroticism is shown to decrease. The overall findings from longitudinal studies of the Big Five indicate people become more socially dominant, more agreeable, more conscientious, more emotionally stable, which is the flip of neuroticism, right? So neuroticism goes down. What that means is people are becoming more emotionally stable. And you'll also find that risk-taking behavior decreases for people as they get older. Lucas and Donellan speculated that after 60, some people are less concerned with careers and also less concerned with making people happy. And so what they end up being able to do is enjoy their life more. Here's an example of a gentleman who certainly looks like he is doing that and doesn't really care. Who cares?